Welcome to WP Coffee Talk with your podcast barista, Michelle Frechette. Special thanks to our sponsors, WS Forum and Beaver Builder. If you're interested in joining WP Coffee Talk as a guest or a sponsor, please visit our site at wpcoffeetalk.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to WP Coffee Talk. I'm your podcast barista, Michelle Frechette serving up the podcast and the the WordPress stories from around the world. And today my guest is Jocelyn Hendrickson, who is the Senior Project Manager at Bluehost, which is now part of Newfold Digital. Hi, Jocelyn. How are you? Hi, Michelle. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. As you were reminding me earlier, we've seen each other a few times this year already, which I can't say that about almost anybody that I work with, but but I've seen you at a few WordCamps this year. So it's nice to see you back on home territory. Yeah. Same, likewise. Yeah, it was really yeah. fun to be able to talk to you in Athens as well as in uh, Bangkok. Yeah. It was really great. Yeah, it's. I love the WordPress community for those reasons that we can travel, we can see each other, and it's like all these touch points with new people, but also the same people and kind of continue to grow those relationships, which is super cool. Yeah. So I, I said who you are, but tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do with at Bluehost. Yep. So I'm a product manager at Bluehost. Um, Right now, my area of focus is on WordPress commerce. And so a lot of integrations with WooCommerce and really just building out products that help to help merchants be successful online, you know, and make it easier than ever before for them to get their site, get their store up and going, um, add sales, get their products loaded. So I've been with the company for about 10 years and I just started working on the WordPress side of things okay. last year. So it's been very, you know, I've, I've done a lot of other things, third-party integrations with Google or, you know, other things mm-hmm. like that. So the WordPress side has always been handled by others and it's sure. really recent, but exciting for me. So some, for some people, like a year into WordPress feels like a newbie to other people. It's like, wow, you've been here forever because that's how WordPress goes. Right. Which is like, yeah. I tell, I tell people that I've been using WordPress since 2012 and a lot of people are like, wow, you've been it forever. But then people who are like, oh, I remember when we just first got started. Oh, you haven't been here very long. Have you, Michelle? So it's all a, a spectrum and I, I'm grateful that you're part of it. So thanks well, thank for being you so here. Much. Absolutely. Yeah. So I always ask people to tell us about your mug and what you're drinking in it. And you said you have two mugs, so I can't wait to see these. Go ahead. Let's see. (laughs) Yeah. So my first one, I've got um, this mug here. Let's see if you can see it. It says weirdo. Weirdo. (laughs) I think I need one of those. I need to find a mug that says weirdo. (laughs) So a colleague that when we were back before pandemic days um, brought in two mugs. One was weirdo and one was weirder or weirdest. And her and I were in the same office in our building and she had our team that was in the same room vote on who would get weirdo and weirdest. And I ended up with the least weird one, but I just feel like it really rings true to true to me. But what's in that one is um, chai tea. So there's a company called Black Scotty. They make a syrup and it's my favorite in the world. Oh, I like that. We'll have to put that in the show notes. Send me a link for that so we can I can experience it, too. So it's so good. If your first mug says weirdo, what does your other mug say? Ew, David. David, (laughs) ew. Shit's Creek. Uh, I love it. I just started rewatching it for like the seventh time the other day. (laughs) Which is always a great idea. Always a great Mm -hmm. idea. (laughs) I saw a TikTok recently where where it said like, what's a song that only exists in a television show that just slaps and that's like every single person that was duetting it was like the Alexa song right the Alexa song yeah. <laughs> the Alexa song it was of so course. funny so yeah so we can bond over that at WordCamp US maybe <laughs> perfect yes I, I it's my favorite but I have I've got water in this mug because my chai tea makes me too you know I gotta, I gotta oh, yeah. do the trade-off I well I have too. I have a mug I haven't had on the show before this is from opensource.com and it's oh, a, awesome. Um, yeah. So Amy June Heinlein sent me this one and I've got coffee with um, caramel macchiato creamer in it. And Yum. I will res- regret later that I'm drinking coffee at five o'clock in the evening, but for now, I'm living on the edge. No. Right. YOLO. T- t- today, Michelle's okay. <laughs> tomorrow, Michelle may be a little bit irritated by it. <laughs> T- tomorrow, Michelle is going to be like, what did you do to me? <laughs> So a year ago, you guys, about last year, I should say a year ago, I don't know how long ago, but last year sometime you got started with WordPress. How did you get started with WordPress? How did that happen? 
Yeah. So, I mean, I, I say a year ago, I've, I've been, and I've worked in WordPress for years, um, mostly because of uh, customer service or understanding integrations for Bluehost. And like, you know, I've worked for the company for 10 years and you can't not know about WordPress for, <laughs> for the yeah. company. Like it feels like a betrayal, you know? So I, I dabbled here and there for it, but um, really a lot of it, we had a lot of shifts in our company, a lot of dynamic, a lot of changes to what was going on. Um, and there was just an opportunity for me to step in to work on the commerce side of things with, with WordPress. And um, I'd been working on more backend integration products or, you know, things with cPanel and things like that. And, and I wanted a change of pace, you know, and so I said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Like, sign me up, let's get into it. And so I just dove head first into documentation and playing around and understanding not only WordPress, but WooCommerce is, is a huge part of it as well as having mm -hmm. to do both of those kind of as a, as a beginner. So have you ever been part of a community like WordPress in any other area of your life? It's like so different. I can't, I can't say that I have. I mean, I mean, maybe like in high school, you know, like there's, <laughs> you know, you have the clubs and the the communities there, but no, I mean, it, it is so different. And yeah. what I've really loved is that anytime I'm like, oh, I've got this question and I don't want to ask this question because it feels like this is, I should know this. But every time I have to ask those questions, the responses are always like, yes, let me teach you. Let me show yeah. you, let me empower you. And here's how you find X, Y, or Z. And so it's been it's been really great to to dive in because I don't feel like I'm reliant on being mm. a complete expert. You know what I mean? I I'm reliant yeah. on my own. I'm reliant on my own go go to, like like yeah. my own desire to research and understand. Yeah, I love that. And there's so many places you can turn to for information. Besides people, there's like all I have to do is Google. Or honestly, there's been times I've just asked a question to Twitter. And lots of people are giving me advice, which I love. So pretty yeah. cool stuff. Hive mind, I think they call it, right? Yeah. So what's something that you think people skip or don't focus enough attention on when building sites that would make them better? Honestly, I think that the biggest thing that I've seen is people create their you know, they, they have this dream, they want to build a site, they want to have an online presence, whether it's for blogging or for their recipes or creating a store. And I think that they have expectations that they can just jump in and have their site and they'll get traffic and visitors immediately. And they don't understand all of the legwork that's behind it. And so I think one thing that often gets skipped is planning and preparation for your site like mm -hmm. yes you have a dream but like understanding what your site structure is what pages that you want to have how that's going to impact your seo um i mean it's it's a lot better to fail on paper than in pixels and it's a lot cheaper that way, <laughs> true you know? true so I, I i think that a lot of like the planning that goes into it and understanding and finding the target audience and knowing who you're trying to reach is something that is not often thought about. It's just kind of, okay, I started this site, but now what, you know, and then they have to kind of backtrack and do those same things and maybe redo a couple of pages. Um, so I think that and a combination of being patient with yourself and setting mm -hmm. realistic expectations and goals. Um, you know, it yeah. takes months, it takes months to start seeing your success. It takes, it takes a while and mm -hmm. every month is going to be different, especially as you're getting started. And so I think if you have those expectations set and you know what you're going in for and you know that you, you don't launch and then all of a sudden you're making, you know, hundreds of dollars in revenue your first day, like that's, mm -hmm. um, right. that's just not realistic for, for most people. Um, I think, yeah. I think those things and, and also not understanding um, the best way to communicate with their audience. They'll mm -hmm. have a lot of jargon, you know, on their website and people are like, oh yeah, this is not making sense to me, you know? Um, yeah. So just plan ahead, be easy on yourself, do rough sketches, take a Absolutely. step back and make sure that you know where you're going. When I was freelancing, I had somebody that I'd gone to high school with say to me, hey, do you think you could build me a website? I want to be a blogger. And I was like, oh, well, what do you want to blog about? And she says, well, I don't really know yet, but I heard you can make a lot of money blogging. I said, nope, you're not going to make a lot of money blogging unless you know what you're going for. You have 
a built-in audience to start with and all of the things that come along that. And then when I told her how much it would cost for me to build her the site, and then it might take her three to four years even to make that money back. She's like, okay, never mind. <laughs> so yep. I'm like, not here to discourage you, but I'm here to set realistic expectations. <laughs> Yeah, which is which is super important. And I think with that too, and and I know that we hear this all the time, but SEO is so important for your for your traffic and for your website. And, and so I take the time to learn or at least get a base understanding of mm -hmm. SEO yes. so that you're set up for success. Absolutely. A hundred percent agree with you on that. When you think back over your, let's say your Bluehost journey, including WordPress, what's something that you wish you had known? earlier in that process and in that journey that you know now, but would have made life a whole lot easier sooner? Oh gosh, there are so many things. <laughs> I, I'm a person who is, I, I love learning. I, anytime I can learn something new, I'm learning something new. Like I have 10,000, my, I'm also my crafter, 10,000 different crafts over on my table over there. Cause I learn how to do something and then I get started on it. And then I get fascinated by something else. Um, but I think one of the biggest things, you know, so I, where I'd use WordPress or I'd help customers with that, I never have really taken the time to build out anything for me, no site for me. Mm -hmm. And because it was intimidating and I wish that I would have just dove in earlier mm -hmm. um, because the, the possibilities are endless. There's so much customization you can do. You know, you can do so much with WordPress and with, especially with all the plugins out there and the community out there to help you, mm -hmm. um, I just, I don't know. I wish I would have invested a little bit more into doing that for myself. Yeah, I understand. I really do. When you think back over, as we mentioned WordCamps earlier, but WordCamps, other WordPress events, maybe meetups, things like that. What's something, um, a moment perhaps that was kind of pivotal for you or, I don't know, inspiring over the course of, you know, those kinds of events? Uh, tell us a little bit about what that might have been. Sure. Yeah. So my first WordCamp ever was actually WordCamp Asia this year. Ah, so it's the cool. first time I've ever been. And then my second one was Athens. So oh my I goodness. This... You start with the big ones. <laughs> I know. I know. I know they're like, and my coworkers are like, okay, so now when you go to the smaller ones, like if they're, they're not, not like, like this, don't, don't set yourself up for True. you know disappointment because these are not like that. Um, but it's, but still it was really fun. And, uh, there was a lot of talks that I've had to go back and, um, you know, see if there's videos for, to go watch them. Cause I I've been working at the booth talking to attendees, but I think the biggest thing that stood out is the people that I met in Asia, even though it was just the one time for the next couple of days in Athens, you know, they saw me, they remembered my name, they remembered who I was. And it was yeah. just very, very friendly. And, you know, there's people who have been, part of the community for a long time they've seen each other at dozens of events and I was never made to feel as though I was an outsider or like you're not one of us you know it was like come here come here yes let me show you let's talk about things you know it was just very welcoming and, and I think that 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 made a huge impact on me just knowing mm -hmm. like I was very nervous my first word count like I don't know anybody and everybody knows yeah. everybody and not me but I think I think that that's probably what made the biggest impact yeah, I can imagine that to be true too. I agree. Like, and, and it doesn't matter where you work. It's like, you can be competitors. Like I work for Liquid Web, you look work for Bluehost and like we can get together on a podcast. We can have a drink at, you know, a cup of coffee or a cup of chai tea or whatever at a, at a word camp. And it's like, we're not sharing trade secrets, but we're not ever not friends either. And I think that's pretty right. cool about WordPress. Well, and, and in fact, uh, the GoDaddy booth, <laughs> There, where we, where our booth was in Athens, it was right by those big glass doors to the kind of patio outside area where we took oh, yeah. a big picture. And it was so hot. It was so hot. And GoDaddy was like down and around the corner, kind of by a fan. And so there was a few times that I went and I'm just like, hi, I'm here to just sit. <laughs> I just want to cool off for a minute. <laughs> yeah. I just need not the sunshine beating on my face for a minute. <laughs> Like, I don't need your swag. I just need the cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. That's so fun. You're right, though. It's like, it's all like, hey, have a seat. We're all good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, tell us more about what's going on at Bluehost. I know you guys have some exciting things happening. So here's your opportunity to share it. Tell us what's going on. Yeah. So we just launched, um, it's called Wonder Suite. So we have 
it's not a new product. It's a new experience for Bluehost customers in creating their website. And so, and we actually demoed it at WordCamp Athens and had a lot of positive feedback, but it includes a couple of different aspects of it. The first is our onboarding, where we are um, integrating into block patterns and templates so that as customers are telling us a little bit more about their website. So if they're saying, I'm in arts and crafts or I'm in weddings, then we start building previews using block patterns and templates that have to do with arts and crafts. So Ooh. you'll have a full homepage that has images and pictures and, and not just images and pictures, but copy that's like, unleash your creative beast, or I don't know, something like that. I made that one up, but you know, it relates to what you do and, and, and the type of site that you're building, um, which is really cool because the onboarding, it doesn't feel like onboarding. You feel mm-hmm. like you're already kind of designing and creating your site. Mm-hmm. And we're also integrated with Yoast SEO. So when they're inputting their social media or, you know, their logo and their site title and description, we're giving them a head start on their SEO without them knowing it, right? Because nice. Yoast SEO, we, we activate that um, for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the continuation of it, those same block patterns that we were talking about, we uh, have Wonder Blocks, which is all built on core WordPress blocks. So mm-hmm. nothing's like super customizable there. Everything's built on core um, where users can go in and they can say, oh, I want a full homepage template, or I want, I need a hero image. And Mm -hmm. it's using those same, it's using the same algorithm to display the same things that are like, you told us your arts and crafts. So here's arts, Mm -hmm. an arts and crafts header. Here's an arts and craft section title. Here's arts and crafts, uh, you know, telling them about like features. Um, so that's Mm -hmm. really exciting because, and in fact, so Dave Ryan and I, we had to do a demo of, of, the wonder suite for our company and he and I sat down and we built out a full website plus a store in about 45 minutes wow total. and and we had including the store page there was there was four pages um so it wasn't huge but we had a full home page an about page a contact yeah. page um and then he and I he's a photographer and I'm an artist so we took our art and photography and place them on mock pictures right so like mm-hmm. my, like I have this cute I'll have to send you the link because it's so cute I I have this box that I drew on, on my mm-hmm. iPad and we put this little fox mug and he's just the cutest thing and I might put them for real life um, <laughs> I love and then, that and then two more things and I, I'll, I'll be quick about it uh yeah it's fine one is our wonder cart uh plug-in that mm-hmm. so get we we acquired Yith and so they build a lot of plugins for us and they built this beautiful plugin for merchants to be able to go and create sales discounts promotions on their shop in a matter of few clicks. And what's cool about that is that I've not seen any plugin like that on the market where it has so many different campaign options and customization options mm-hmm. all in one. Um, typically you see merchants they have to install three, four, five, six different plugins that may or may not be by the same author that may or may not be compatible with each other that always have a different, you know, look and feel to them in WP admin. So, so not only are they managing multiple plugins, getting plug and bloat, but they have to learn each new plugin every single time and manage them elsewhere. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's 13 different types of promotions, buy one, get one free, last deal in cart, uh, free gift in cart, you know, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the last part that I'm super excited about is our our embedded help, our WordPress help. Our customers, we hear from them time and time again, like, I wish I had more help right here at my fingertips as I'm working on the thing I'm working on. And there's not really anything like out of the box, that's, that's really super helpful for all WordPress and especially for the type of questions our users are asking. And so we, we built this embedded contextual help inside WordPress that is integrated with open AI. And so what's cool is that we, you know, can ask it a question, how do I add a new user? How do I create a new page? It'll give the customer the steps. And then as they're clicking through WP admin, you know, if they're on the homepage or on the dashboard and they click products or add a product over here, it persists in the, in the side nav over there. So Ooh, they always nice. have that there for them. Um, and, and we, with it being integrated into open AI, we ask open AI one time. And mm-hmm. once we get an answer and we vetted that it's like, correct, we'll, we'll store that in our, our database, which is super exciting. Nice. So, it's, you know, we, we have them stored and then we can build on 
what customers are asking us and improve okay. the results that are given. So wow, uh, it's, it's super exciting. And then we have a unified look and feel with the Yoast plugin to kind of mm-hmm. match their styling, uh, make it feel a little bit more cohesive. And again, not so like jarring when you're jumping from one plugin to the next. Sure. Oh, that's really great. Um, there's how there's is- a lot packed in. <laughs> I can see why you guys are excited to get that out in the market and let people know about it for sure. Yeah. Very exciting. And and I love that you feel, I, I'm getting this feeling like you're the mom who's showing everybody their new, their newborn. <laughs> like, look look at I the did. pictures. Look at the pictures. Exactly. Have I shown you like <laughs> this kind of thing? Exactly. I oh, love that. Now, but now, but now it's sleeping. Oh, That's right. They're awake. Yeah. That's right. And this is when they learn to walk and this is yes. All the things. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. You can tell people who are, um, I'm not saying you're a nerd like me, but you can tell the nerds because we have screenshots of tech on our phones instead of just only our kids and our dogs and our cats and things like that. It's like, yeah, I keep those in a separate file now. So when people are just scrolling through my photos, they're not like, what's this? I'm like, oh, that's the dashboard. <laughs> yeah, I have a full folder dedicated to like when I'm on a site and I'm like, that was delightful screenshot and I save it to a folder. <laughs> we are the we are the well we're not the original nerds because we're not old enough to be the original nerds but we definitely are very much are, so very much and I'm proud of it it's all okay you know yeah, it's, it's like, all good. we should get t-shirts made like nerd club or something I don't know yeah, yeah. I'm all about it <laughs> for sure for sure so that's very exciting and congratulations to you and the team on on being able to put that out to market very cool stuff thank you so much yeah of course are you ready for my rapid fire questions yeah. Deep breath. Okay. We're good. <laughs> deep breath and another, t- another hit of the tea. Okay. <laughs> I, I always say, I ask them rapidly. You take the time you need to, uh, to answer them. So there are no gotchas. It's just, it's kind of like inside the actor studio when um, James Lipton asks everybody, like, if there is a God, what do you want to hear him say when you arrive at the pearly gates? It's kind of like that, but a little less like gravitas. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> what are two or three must have plugins that you would recommend to somebody building their own website? This has been, so as I've been thinking about the answers, this one has been kind of the most difficult for me to think of because of, like I said, like I'm not in there all the time. I'm not building Mm -hmm. out sites for other people. Um, But the couple that I'm really impressed by, one is cool. It's called user switching, where you see what your user sees, right? In a a better way. And Mm -hmm. I really love that for testing. I'm, I'm a huge I'm, I'm a huge advocate for it. like, test your site, test your things. Like every single time, always mm-hmm. test your changes and have other people do it, you know, put yourself in the mm-hmm. customer's mindset. So I think that that one's really cool um, to be able to quickly do that. Cause to be honest, previewing your site, when you're logged into WP admin, it's just not the same as it's seeing not, it. Outside. And also user switching is really helpful for solving problems. If you do, like, if you are running WooCommerce or things like that, like they say they can't see it. What if, if I log in as them, what can I see? So yes, definitely exactly. it's a good one. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, another one that I've, I've used a couple of times is Faker Press, you know, go in and uh, hmm. uh, throw in some fake content. So it's like kind of a way to test themes. So you can have a couple of pages and posts and see what it's going to look like without necessarily like dedicating yourself to that theme. And you can have the fake content in there. So I think that that one's kind of cool because we mm-hmm. get a lot of customers that are like, sometimes they'll have 20 different themes that are installed, you know, that they're yes. like, I was trying to find the perfect one, you know? And so I think that that one's, that one's kind of cool to be able to solve. Did you settle problem. on one yet? Can we get rid of the old ones yet? Yeah. Right. Can we delete this? <laughs> Can we clean up some of this crap? Um, yeah. And then another one where um, this is going to come back to like my product management side of things, but um, there's a Kanban plugin. I think it's just called Kanban boards for WordPress. Mm-hmm. And you're able to create like project management in your dashboard and be like, okay, here's all the things that I want to do for my site. And now I can prioritize those things because let's get real. It's overwhelming and daunting to build a website from scratch, especially for new users, but being able to break down those tasks, focus on bit by bit. I mean, Mm -hmm. I, I live and breathe by tasks as a product manager. So Yes. Yes. Tasks are helpful. You can't, especially because you like to check them off when they're done and there's a feeling of accomplishment when you can right oh for sure for sure yep have you had a mentor at all in your wordpress or tech journey um whether official or unofficial maybe somebody that you looked up to or somebody like you 
that took you under their wing, that kind of thing. And who was it? I've, I've had so many, so many incredible experiences with people. So, you know, starting with the, with WordPress, I'm lucky enough to be able to get to work with people like John DeRosiers, you know, I've got Chris Miles, we've got Mike Hansen, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've got even Devin Sears, the hype man, like I've got so many incredible people who are well known in uh, the WordPress community that are right there and every single mm -hmm. one of them and I know I'm not saying all the names we would be here for a long time so I apologize <laughs> but um every single one of them have have done something to help me you know at, at some point or another been just super patient with explaining things um like mm -hmm. kind of I previously mentioned um and then I think like in my career in general I've I've been able to work with some incredible developers who so the reason I'm in product management is I, I originally was in customer service mm -hmm. and um, I just, I just like applied for every single position I ever, you know, just you know, needed more money. Let's be real. But eventually I was a, the department manager for a billing. Mm -hmm. And while growing into that position, I just fostered such a love for customers and like mm -hmm. helping them out and seeing them succeed and be successful online. But for me, in order for me to help customers be successful, it's important that I understand the technology behind our product and not just like, oh yeah, here's our product. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started scheduling me meetings with a few developers, you know, here and there and get time on their calendars and explain this to me, like, help me understand this. Um, I think one of the most empowering things is when you're trying to build a new product is to say, I don't know, I need help, help me understand, yeah, explain that yeah. better. But I mean, I just have had so many people, even in product management that have been like, oh, here's some great advice. And I don't know. I don't know that I could pinpoint one person. <laughs> That's okay. I love it. But I'm going to make you pick one person for the next question. Who is somebody okay. in the WordPress community that you admire and why? And it can't be somebody you already named. <laughs> Can we go Maybe. back five minutes? <laughs> Oh, that is, that I is know. a really good question. It's a tough one, huh? So I think, so one person that I met uh, when I was in WordCamp Asia was Noel Talk, and I saw him again in Athens. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, since meeting him, and it was funny because I've read articles that he's written, or I've read his works before. I'm like, man, this guy's cool. Like, you know, that or the other, and then met him in, in real life. And he, again, was one of those people who were like, hi, like, yes, we can be friends immediately, like smile on my face. Like, and, and in Athens in Asia, I lost my voice completely. So mm -hmm. I was talking, it was, it was gross to hear me speak. Let's be real. Like, <laughs> and he's like, okay, level one of the mall, there's this place that has this red sign, get this type of tea there. It'll change your life, you know, just Aww. super, super kind. So that was that. Um, and then I have to say, Michelle, you, I am very inspired by your um, campaigns that you do at the word camps, you know, uh, Michelle and me selfies and, you know, and in fact, I was telling you that I have the one where your daughter yeah. is there and yeah. I never got around to posting it. But, you got to yeah, post I, it I, now I, so I can see it and share it with well, her. So that'll I be will, good. But, but you've been, you've been very inspiring as I've been kind oh, of growing you. into the community. So especially as a woman, um, it's, it's really empowering to see your presence and the way that people really admire you. Thank you. Well, we need more of you in the community. So if I can help get more of you in the community, then I'm doing my job right. So <laughs> what's something that you haven't learned yet in WordPress that you really would like to? Oh, geez. I think probably um, creating my own. I mean, and the hard thing is, it's like themes are not even going to be a thing in the future, really, like with the blocks and patterns. So like I say this, but creating my own child themes or being able to mm. Um, create my own things in WordPress has been an mm -hmm. endeavor I've not delved into. I mean, I've I've tried mm -hmm. around here or there on my local to see what I could see what I could do, but I've not completely dedicated myself to understanding a lot of like the WordPress yeah code base. We which, understand, and it's it's very. Um, I've got too much on my plate for it, but that is something that I would slowly <laughs> like to work towards. I did something similar. I wanted to know more about what it means to develop a plugin. So, yeah. and I know that true developers will look at me and say that you didn't really do that. Or most of them are actually pretty kind of don't say that. But I took, <laughs> I took a lunch hour 
when I was traveling in 2020. And literally over the course of about 45 minutes, I took Hello Dolly, downloaded it, reworked it so that it was my own plugin, created something called Hello Beautiful, where every time you log into your website, it tells you wonderful things about yourself. Just a little pep talk on your own dashboard. And, um, and then I was encouraged to um, submit it to the repo. So it actually exists in the repo. So I'm technically a developer and have WordPress, I have a plugin, plugin in the repo. And it was because I wanted to learn a little bit more about what it meant to be a developer so that I, as somebody who was at the time working in customer success, had a better understanding of the developers for the tools and technology that I was helping my customers use. And so, yeah, um, yeah I recommended it. And I, I actually, <laughs> it worked as soon as I uploaded it to my website. I was like, oh my God, it worked. It just worked. So I I tweeted that after, good and feeling. after dude, I'm like, just built a WordPress plug in on my um on my lunch hour like it's that hard just to be funny no big right? deal so and no big deal like eh, you know whatever <laughs> I don't know what I'll do next week maybe I'll build a plane I don't know but yeah no yeah. so if you get an opportunity to play with those kinds of things like the first time I just did a child theme just to be able to add functionality it wasn't even like it really didn't do much but just to add functionality felt so empowering so when you get a chance you know maybe yeah. a lunch hour you can you know build something. I don't know. It is super <laughs> empowering to be like, I did this thing. Let me show you. Like it, it feels good. And, and yeah. again, like I said, um, I, I have this drive to understand things like not yes. just like know what they are, but like I, when there's bugs or issues, I'm often digging in the code base. I'm trying to like replicate, like, and, and so yeah. I can tell my developers, I can say, Hey, look what I, I found you something. I found you this is yep. this helpful. And they're like, Oh, okay. But for me, one thing that I always say is that I strongly believe that with a bit of creativity and a dash of curiosity, there's no limit of what you can accomplish. Like you just need exactly. a little bit of both and you can do incredible things. I 100% agree with you. I love that. Spread the word. I love that so yeah. much. <laughs> now, the other side of that is the next question, which is what's the biggest mistake you've ever made in WordPress and what did you learn from it? But mistakes oh are part of learning and growing. So it's not actually the opposite. It's part of the, the journey and the process. I don't know that I can say like biggest mistake, but like for me, it was devastating. So I was trying to build out a demo site and I spent hours just being like, you know, creating fake products and finding the images and making sure that I had like this beautiful color palette, you know, and had it all set up. And um, I I don't know what I did. I changed some setting to where my homepage was no longer my homepage. And it was like some static other page that like, I don't even know where it came from or what I did. I don't <laughs> oh, even, no. I like, I couldn't even tell you what I did to make this happen. But after that, all my pages, like, even though I could see them in my page list, I, I would click on them and, you know, I was getting like 403s and whatever. Oh, no. and I was just gutted. I was gutted at what I did because I spent all of this time and I didn't have a backup. And I was like, okay, it's just a demo site. It's not like I just took down our whole website, you know, <laughs> like I'm not, sure. I'm not impacting anybody except myself, but um, I don't know. I think probably just moving too fast and not yeah. like slowing down to make sure that I'm like, okay, do I really want to hit save changes? Do I really want to do this? <laughs> like, did I make yes. a backup? So I think yeah. that, that was, that was what it was. And I could not even give you replication steps if I tried. <laughs> it was just bad. It was a hot mess. It's nice when we have versioning where we can go, okay, wait, go back. But we don't always have that for every kind of step that we make. And that's when you're like, oh, man. So no, I understand yep. completely. Yep. I, had a, a, I have a private customer recently had me change something on their homepage. And I was like, if I take that down, how much? because they're going to want to put it back up in a couple months, how am I going to remember? So I, I made those blocks be like reusable blocks so that I wouldn't have to remember what they said. But then they wanted this to go exactly like it was before. So I was just able to roll back the version of the page, oh, which nice. was even easier. But I was like, yes. I had so many like safeguards in place. I would have to remember what it looked like or use the remember way back. what to do. Yeah, exactly. So I understand. <laughs> the way back machine. I haven't heard that in a while. Oh, gosh. I use it all the time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, same, same. I mean, I used to, when I was in support, we would we'd yeah. use a whole lot more, not so much now, but it's very yeah. helpful. A, a customer from about seven years ago said, hey, I haven't had a website in a while, but I want it to look like it used to. Um, and so I had like, I'm like, all right, Wayback Machine it is, because I don't remember what I built seven years ago for you, and I don't have a backup of that anymore. So yeah. nope. every That's once in a while, funny. it comes in handy. 
Yes. The opposite of that is what's your proudest accomplishment in WordPress? Tell us about that. Um, I think it's just really been my ability to dive in and understand things and yeah. kind of learn as I'm playing along. And there was, um, so with the block editor, one thing that was driving my um, my boss's boss crazy is that when you view the page, you would see like the home contact about whatever. And he's like, mm -hmm. why does WordPress by default have this? How can I change this? And I like went and figured out, I'm like, oh, here's how you do it. You have to go to the template and you got to remove the post title and do this. And I'm like, look, your titles. And it sounds really stupid, but and he's like, it was that easy. And like, it saved his heartburn because he was uh -huh. on, you know, he was on about it forever. And you um, were the hero. I love it. It's like, I did a thing. I figured out this tiny little insignificant thing, but I, I think that, and then um, the demo site that Dev, uh, David Ryan and I built together, like, yeah, it's not a real site, but I look at it, I'm like, dang, that's pretty good. You know? And, that's and I awesome. think too, is that uh, what we're, what we're building at Bluehost to empower our customers. So it's not necessarily like what I have built, but being able to understand our customers and the pain points that they're experiencing and really what mm -hmm. the market needs has been really helpful for me to help drive and deliver on new innovative products for, for users to have. That's wonderful. I love that. Um, if you weren't working in tech though, what is another career that you might like to attempt? I, if I was not, if I did not have to rely on money, I would yes. be an artist and I would <laughs> spend my whole day painting or drawing, you know, doing digital art. I love, I love art. Um, a couple of mine are, are, I don't know if you can see them, but I've got oh, a couple see, yeah. of mine back there. And um, yeah, I actually last summer, was it last summer? It must have been. I took a digital art class from a Disney animator that was here like oh, local cool. and he did a six week long digital art course. Um, and so that was, that was really, really fun to do. Um, I yeah, that. I think, I think that that's what I would do. I would do something that's very creative, very hands-on, very, mm -hmm. like, you know, here's my creations. Look at I them. That. <laughs> See what I made. <laughs> Adore them. Put it on your fridge. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> What's something on your bucket list? Oh gosh, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know these days. Um, usually it's survive my night without my children having tantrums or we've got five kids our youngest okay. is four our youngest is four our oldest is 15 so it gets hectic um no but I think uh something on my bucket list I want to scuba dive in a few more places so we got my husband and Ooh. I got cert scuba dive certified last year and we went scuba diving in Mexico in April mm -hmm. it was incredible I mean we swam with sharks and turtles and you know these huge eagle rays um I think that's that would cool. be that would be something is probably go to a few more countries and dive in a couple different places that have different um you yeah. know the, where the except all the biomes are so different depending on where you are the water color everything mm -hmm. you know that's I think that's, that's awesome. what I'd want to do and and do something to help with like the environment to do like cleanup projects as I'm doing it and mm -hmm. not purely just for like check out my GoPro footage, but I definitely did do that also. <laughs> I love it. You'll have to share that later too. <laughs> yeah. Show us or tell us about a hidden talent that you have that people in the WordPress community might not know about. I don't know. I think probably my art, you know, it's something that yeah. I'm, um, I don't really, I don't really publish a lot of it. You know, I, yeah. I, it's usually for myself. It's my, it's my sanity. You know, I'll take art breaks. So when things are too, I get too much in my head. I, I deal with a lot of technical documentation, a lot of technical mm -hmm. things and it, my head just gets, yeah. it's too much. And so for my mental health, I take art breaks and I'll sit and I'll just draw and doodle, um, or I'll get out paints and just work on a bit of my painting mm -hmm. here or there. Um, but I think like for me, I don't, I just get so scared of sharing that with people. Like it feels very vulnerable. Like it feels so mm -hmm. personal and vulnerable. Um, and I think a lot of it is like my, my perfectionism, <laughs> like, but you'll see my smudge from my eraser. You can't see that. Like that's my <laughs> eyes only, you know, like it, it's difficult, but I, I do, I encourage my kids. I mean, you know, we, we, I paint with my kids a lot as well. We pull mm -hmm. out the paints and we do projects together. In fact, this was one. I did recently with my four-year-old, we did these two. So I drew, I drew Aww. this guy, this lion, the color, and she 
and then she she watercolors them you know and so they're oh quick gosh. easy little things I love and then them. I give her the paint and she watercolors it and I I just feel like being able to like lean into your gifts and regardless mm-hmm. of your talent level like where I'm not asking my kids to be Picassos but I think right. the self-expression and just trying is is important and, and developing that love of it, right? Seeing what, if that's your passion area and being able to like create for the sake of creation and not necessarily right. because it needs to be viewed and admired by everybody. Or because it's a project at school that you have to do this, even though you, you know, yeah, that, you hate, exactly. that you hate it. And I have tons yeah. of sketches that I'm like, I'll never show anybody because they weren't for anybody. They were just yep. for me because I needed them mm-hmm. in that moment. So exactly. it's very cathartic. Yeah. I love that, but I do think you're a really good artist and you should share it, but that's just my opinion. (laughs) Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. That means a lot. (laughs) How can people find you online if they're looking for you on Twitter or any of the other new things that are out there, um, Instagram, whatever, how do we find you? Yep. So I'm Joss Hendrickson, Joss.Hendrickson. I think one of them has a not dot. My name's too long to fit on any of the (laughs) handles. So it's J-O-C-E Hendrickson. Um, on social media I'll be there um, and we'll have on that threads. in the show notes yeah we'll Perfect. find you yep that's we'll put it in the show notes if you are listening to this and didn't find us online you can go to wpcoffeetalk.com find Jocelyn's uh, episode and all of the information to get in touch with her will be there so anything else you'd like to share before we call it a day no, just thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, it's been such a pleasure and I feel very honored to be a guest on the show. And oh, well, thank you look for forward joining to, me. Look forward to our future interactions and seeing you at work. Absolutely. Us. Well, the honor is mine. Thank you for being here today. Appreciate it very much. We'll see yep. everybody on the next episode of WP Coffee Talk.